Hello, welcome to Edifying Moments. Hey, I'm your host, B. James. I'm excited about what it is we're going to be discussing today. Like, Pastor has really been drilling in on the supernatural. And if you have not watched that series, you need to go back on our YouTube archives. You need to go back on Facebook archives, whatever you got to do. Take your pen and your pad and start taking notes. Because if you can apply some of this stuff, it's life changing. Because he, he basically presents the information in a way you can understand it. And when I mean understand, it means that you can actually stand under it and live your life in a way that you're protected by this information. It is really on point. So just in case we're going to go live again on Sunday or on Tuesdays, Sundays at 10 a.m., Tuesdays at 7 p.m. And if you can't be in the house, we're at 205 Woodlawn Avenue in Petal. If you cannot be in the house, go ahead and text LCC to 866-891-0606. That way you get added to our database so we can send you a message or send you a link anytime we go live so you don't miss nothing. So he's been teaching on the supernatural and man, it has been good. It has been really good, really good. Uh, specifically though, he said something He said something this past Tuesday. He said that uh, this he was quoting Apostle. And Apostle Thompson, who's our spiritual father, he says that you have to be a dummy to not understand the supernatural. And when he said it, I thought about it. And I'm like, you know, that's just, you know, you know I mean, only a dummy cannot understand the supernatural. That's pretty harsh. But when, it, when you actually look up the word dummy, you know, he, that was Apostle's definition. But when you look up the word dummy or dumb, it's just somebody who doesn't know how to speak. Right. And so not understanding the supernatural if it means that you don't know how to you don't know how to talk. You can't talk supernatural. You can't talk faith. You don't you don't speak faith. And so you speak a different language or you speak a language or you mumbling in things that you just that God can't understand. Let me give you an example. So he talked about how when Joshua and Caleb and 10 others went out to go spy out the land, the promised land, right? And so they went out to spy out this land. And, and so the, the land they saw was flowing with milk and honey. There were, there were vegetation and fruit everywhere. It was a bountiful land, plentiful land. And the only problem is that there was some opposition, right? And so the opposition was that the people who inhabited the land were bigger and stronger. And so they felt like if they went to war uh, with these people, they would lose. Ten of them did anyway. But Joshua and Caleb, they saw that they saw opportunity. They saw what what they would be gaining or what they would be getting from the battle. And they said, oh, it's well worth it. Oh, and we are well able to take the land. And so when they came back to present their reports, this this is the funny thing. When they came back to present their reports, Joshua and Caleb came back with the report of, hey, we are well able to take this. But the other ten, they said, no, 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 they got giants out there. They too big. And and the Bible says that their their communication or their report was evil. It was it wasn't faith talk. It was dumb. It was it was a language that God didn't understand. God understands faith. God understands reliance on him. So Joshua and Caleb was like, yo, with God ain't nothing impossible. I don't care how big they are. They're going to drop. They're going to fall because we here. Right. But the other 10, they didn't see that. They couldn't see what God was saying. And because they couldn't see what God was saying, their communication was evil. It was corrupt. They were dumb. They couldn't speak the language that God understands. And so because of that, they want to wander in the wilderness. That entire generation want to wander in wandering the wilderness. And so the, the importance of being able to speak a language that God understands. God understands your faith, your reliance on him to accomplish his agenda. See, Joshua and Caleb understood that the promised land was promised to them for God's glory. He talked about the uh, a pastor talked about the, the how sometimes we we are glory stealers and how we take situations and we 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 use those situations to give ourselves and bring ourselves glory. But Joshua and Caleb understood that that was a situation for God to get the glory. So they couldn't fail. It was an opportunity for God's God's glory to shine. So they couldn't fail. They had no no opportunity for failure in that moment. They trusted him. They believed them. So therefore, their con their communication was proof of it. And so it was important about watching the way we speak. You know, he's been teaching on the supernatural in such a way that it helped me understand the importance of of living the kind of life that makes God's way of doing things a priority above everything else. 
he talked about a scripture that that really went into the uh the relationships that we have here earthly and he was saying that my relationship with god and my agenda and my calling to him supersedes all other relationships on earth meaning that i understand and i move in the supernatural and my communication is that there's a lot of things in our life that may be factual but they're not true you know it may be factual that uh you know, you, you grew up in a broken home or you may be factual that, uh, you know, your, your relationship is not doing well. It may be factual that your finances isn't doing well. But the truth is that God, man, God, Jesus Christ came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. The truth is that he's the Prince of Peace. The truth is that he has given you everything pertaining to life and godliness. That's the truth. And so our communication, our lifestyle, and how we deal with individuals should always be based on that truth, the supernatural truth that supersedes this life, this realm, this physical, all of it. And so the, the whole teaching has just been bananas. I mean, you really got to go back and listen to it. And I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to go back and take some notes. Like, don't just, don't just listen to it, but take some notes so you can go back and study it later. Uh, he talked about the relationship that that David had and who he was. And so when David faced Goliath, right? Everybody knows the story of David and Goliath. And so how, when David faced Goliath, he, he approached Saul because he wanted the opportunity to fight for God. He wanted the opportunity to be God's man, to give God glory. And Saul, the king couldn't even, he couldn't see it. David, you're too small in stature. You know, you're not even a soldier. You got no experience. You ain't been to boot camp. None of that stuff. You're just a kid. And so what David did, and this, this is a supernatural principle that, uh, that, that I'm definitely applying in my life, and I hope you do the same. Supernatural principle. What David did was David went by and he began to call out his resume. David named all of the times that God delivered him in his servant, in his service of his father. David understood the principle of stewardship. He understood the principle of the agenda. And so his, his speech, his speech was always supernatural. He said, when I was protecting my father's sheep, God delivered me. When I was protecting my father's sheep, I was able to kill a lion. I was able to kill a bear. And so in this moment, he knew that I am going to fight for my father, God, and I know that he would deliver me. His supernatural communication never changed. And so that's what we got to make sure we're always on supernatural communication. We're not being talked out of our game and we're making sure that we are not dummies. We speak only what God says to speak. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Life Construction Church, building the kingdom of God, one life at a time.